Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Hey, Viper Keeper here. Uh, I just wanted to announce that I am going to be changing the format of the videos a little bit, uh, essentially adopting uh, pretty much uh, for the foreseeable future, uh, something more like uh, the mixed bag which I runs around the middle of the month uh, and has been uh, for a long time. Um, again, the metrics on Google are not terrible. Um, I'm not generating very much ad revenue. Um, because people just are not watching the entire video, even if I cut it to the 12 minute uh, mark. Um, making 20 minute videos is worthless if, if people are only watching half of a 12 minute video. So I am going to move to more towards the uh, mixed bag with a whole bunch of shorter clips uh, with a bunch of different animals uh, on a regular basis. There will be occasionally longer segments uh, with the animals, but uh, for the most part I am going to move towards the uh, more mixed uh, bag format uh, than do you know, a single video on a particular snake unless there's something special going on uh, or something like that. But it'll be a 12 minute video uh, composed of, you know, four to five shorter clips uh, uh, for the most part. And I will do away with the uh, mixed bag uh, uh, because essentially every video for the most part will be a mixed bag anyway. So just wanted uh, to let you know that uh, that's how I am uh, structuring uh, the videos you'll see on a weekly basis. Again, please like and subscribe and, and watch the, the videos along with the ads because uh, my revenue is way down like one about one third of what it was uh, last year and even less than the year before. It takes uh, quite a bit of funds to keep the lights on, keep the snakes fed and uh, uh, here at the lair and any help that you can provide um, by simply just watching the videos and uh, liking and subscribing, watching the ads. It uh, doesn't cost you anything except a little bit of time. Uh, I appreciate those people that have donated uh, directly via uh, PayPal. Uh, the email is al at viperkeeper.com if somebody wishes to, uh, to send some money to uh, help uh, uh, keep the videos flowing and such, that would be greatly appreciated. Uh, it costs a lot of money for, for food and substrate and uh, uh, you know, care for the animals. So uh, from here on out, uh, uh, every video will be pretty much a mixed bag. Uh, thanks for everybody's support uh, of the channel and we'll see you in the next video. All right, Miss Rhino Viper has recently started eating again. Uh, she does this uh, sort of all winter long. You know, she eats basically from March to like October and then goes off feed for that entire time. 
And of course, this scares the crap out of us. <laughs> we think something's wrong, but she's been doing this for quite some time. Um, we, because river jacks or rhino vipers, as they're also known, uh, are semi-aquatic snake. Uh, I try to give her a reasonable heat gradient. She gets heat from the light source below. She she gets way too hot and disappears way in the back side of the cage if I put her own uh, incandescent light on for heat. She has a full spectrum bulb uh, for light, but uh, um, she very seldom goes and sits on top of the log. So I'm glad to see that She's been eating the pretty much entire month of April. Uh, uh, makes me uh, quite happy. So we'll just let her go on. A rare time when Mr. Barnetti's sitting up at the front of the cage. I'm sure he's thinking, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, they caught me at the front of the cage. <laughs> I need to skedaddle, but I don't want them to move until I'm sure they've seen me. He is just so beautiful. Yeah, and he, you know, he's pretty easy going for a Bothrops, although, you know, no snake likes their cage cleaned and his cage is way overdue. Um, so we'll see how he, he likes that uh, or doesn't. I'm actually thinking of perhaps, you know, moving. He he's okay there, but you know, I I might move one of the other bothrops over to a, a larger cage. So, any anyway, rate, Mr. Barnetti, uh, a rare, uh, rarely seen snake in the collection because usually he's hiding in the back and uh, and not up front here. Okay, here's the other female rhino viper. Oh, we're talkative, huh? We are, yeah. Would you like something to eat? Yeah, maybe, huh? I see you throat puffing. Not interested, huh? You may be going at the shed. All right, I'm gonna leave it. She's been eating uh, right along and decided that she's not gonna eat. Therefore, it might be that she's going into shed. Or she's not happy about me being here filming. Yeah, that could be too. So we just leave it behind. If she eats it, she eats it. If not, uh, unfortunately, that goes to waste. Here's some other snakes that are in the collection you don't often see. These are the Cordobothrops cornutus, the horn pit vipers uh, from Vietnam. Uh, the two of them are sort of, one's crawled up there to make nice uh, to the other. They like to head stack and, and be together and I guess the other one got lonely because the other one was up there on the perch. Uh, these came to me as babies in 2010 uh, via the Moscow Zoo, uh, along with some other Prothrop species that I currently have in the collection. Well, it's really rare to see the, the male Jararaca up on top of his strap box rather than inside of it. The, the, when we take what we can get, um, I will attempt to feed it, but it's a very finicky feeder. Uh, I bet if I put a live rat in there, it would feed quite readily, but uh, it's quite picky. It may or may not eat, it hasn't eaten in a couple of weeks. As you can see, it's not terribly excited, but no one really likes a very excited Bothrops <laughs> either. I know, it's bothering you, but I'll just leave it there. Uh, one of the K 
cages we locked for safety reason, not not because you know someone's going to go in there. We leave the key in there, uh, but uh, in this way they can't possibly push on the glass and open it, and it would be a surprise to come in the room and find one of those. Uh, uh, loose in the room, a very unpleasant one actually. Mm. So, um, certain cages that you want to absolutely be certain are secure, uh, now have locks. Uh, we learned our lesson with the big uh, uh, dwarf water cobra. I know that's sort of a disconnect, but it is indeed called a dwarf water cobra. It's a pretty good sized cobra for water cobra. But he pushed his glass, opened the door, and we found him out in the room and created quite a bit of chaos that day. So, uh, snakes that we absolutely want to be certain, we won't push the glass open, uh, uh, we put locks on the cage, not for security reasons, that we're fearful somebody will get in there. Uh, first, they have to get past me with my arsenal, but uh, um, it's just to make sure that the snake can't push the glass open. All right, so here's the female uh, Jararaca, or Growly as I... Jowly. Jowly, right. And she's been sort of hesitant to feed, which means that mm, she may be ready to sort of pop. I mean, it's not like... Uh, she's, uh, she's undernourished. I mean, that's a snake that would eat until it exploded. And then all of a sudden, the past two weeks, I haven't seen her out much, and she's not really mm, been interested in feeding. So, um, you know, she also is doing a little bit of mouth breathe, breathing which means that she could be in shed, but also if she's got a whole bunch of babies in there, um, you know, those embryos are pressing up and diminishing her lung size. Uh, so we'll just keep her, keep tabs on her and see what's up. 